My reading journal and I are off to a really strong start for the year. So let's have a look at what I read in January, my January reading stats, and set up some spreads for February as well. Hi, it's Erin. Thank you so much for clicking on my video. I'm using my Kindle to balance out the left side of my book because I'm still fairly early on in the journal. It's just great that it's the perfect size to do that. Seems appropriate, right? And let's start out by updating some of my trackers in the very beginning of my reading journal. If you want to see this setup come together, there is a link to it in the description, as well as the top right corner of the screen right now. I always set up my reading journal update videos over the course of a few days, so the information will change and grow a little bit over the course of the video. So we'll be coming back to this page later on. That one's basically just a list of everything that I've read this year in order. Now I want to update my goal. I'm up to seven books at this point, so we've got to colour a few more goal boxes in. I'm trying to match my goal colour to the colour of the theme for that month, so we're going with brown here. And I'm adding Seven Summers by Paige Toon to my anticipated list. It comes out on the 28th of March, and I'm very excited. I love her romance story so much. I read another Throne of Glass book in January, so I've got to colour that one in on the series tracker as well. And I need to add some book covers to my book club spreads. I've got the Literary Ladies on the left side, which is my kind of real life friends book club. And I have the Page Majors on the right, which is the book club that I run through the channel membership program here on YouTube. We have a private Discord server where we discuss bullet journaling, of course, and all things stationary, but also for the Page Majors level, we have our book club in there where we discuss books that we're reading, we have a specific book that we all read every month, and then we come together at the end of the month and have a little voice slash video chat about it, and it's so much fun. So hit the join button down below if you're interested in getting in on that. Our book for February is What You Are Looking For is In The Library by Michiko Aoyama. Still plenty of time to get that one read before the end of February so that you can join in and chat with us about it. Before we get too deep into the journal, I'm really curious what your creative goals are for this year. We all know I'm working on painting in my bullet journal, but I'm a huge philomath and writing is another love of mine. I used to write copious amounts of terrible teenage poetry and I wrote a lot of lyrics back in my music composition days and it's something I really want to reconnect with. I'm not about to start working on my debut novel or anything, but I've been taking this class on writing short fiction just for fun. It's called Fast Flash Fiction, writing tiny, beautiful stories. And it's been so cool learning about how sensory details can make writing more engaging to a reader, what kind of opening lines will hook someone and make them want to continue. I feel like I'm going to notice these things more in the books I'm reading now too. Are my book reviews about to get much more specific? Maybe. The class I'm taking is on Skillshare, the internet's largest online learning community for creatives across literally every Every pursuit you can think of. Music, film, design, crafting, productivity, self-care, marketing, you name it. It's the perfect platform for absolute beginners as well as for more established creatives who are looking to level up their skills or take on a new challenge. What sets Skillshare apart is their learn by doing approach. Skillshare classes aren't just someone telling you how to do the thing. You actually follow your teacher's guidance through a project, so you really learn how to do the thing yourself. At the end, you walk away with a completed project that you can be proud of, which you can also use as a marker of your progress in the future. If you've been wanting to try a new creative hobby but you aren't sure where to start, or if you've been wanting to turn your hobby into a side hustle or a creative business, you can go straight to Skillshare's learning paths. These are curated class collections designed to take you on your journey from beginner to advanced, with classes from a variety of teachers, so you'll have a well-rounded approach to your new skill, as well as plenty of new work to show for your efforts. The class I've been taking is the first in this learning path called Write Powerful Short Fiction, which has three classes in total. The next class is about writing character-driven short stories, and then there's a class about Instagram poetry, which sounds super intriguing to me as a photographer and a logophile. It's not just learning to craft a short writing piece, but also showcasing it in a visual and evocative way. Sounds right up my alley. This year, I'm investing in fulfilling all of my creative urges, and you can too. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's move on to my January reading tracking spreads. We'll come back to the January reading stats later, but for now, let's start on my maybe next and my progress pages. I'm going to update the star ratings and the dates read for any books that I have completed since the last time I picked up my reading journal. That means The Ancient Future, the first book here, The Dark Age. I read this when I was a teenager and I really, really liked it then, but I really did not enjoy it as a 36-year-old woman. So only two and a half stars for that one. In a Jam by Kate Canterbury, I really liked. That one got four stars. I wasn't sure if I was going to do quarter stars or not, but I guess we're doing it because I'm adding quarter stars on to The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. That one I gave three and three quarter stars. And on the right page here, I'm going to update the progress tracker, which is where I have kind of a timeline of how long it took me to read a book, which dates I was reading it from and until. 
To be totally honest with you, this is not useful information for me to have. I just think it looks really cool and it's fun to do. So I will continue to do it. I'm also adding a couple of books here that I had in progress that I was nearly finished, but not quite because I knew I was either going to finish them the same day or maybe the following day. So why not put them on here, you know? I've missed a couple of things, but for now, let's move forward and have a little look through all of the books that I've read so far in January for the time that I was shooting this. We started out with sci-fi. I went into some romance from there. I'm trying to make sure I make more use of my Kindle Unlimited subscription this year, so I've picked a few more things from Kindle Unlimited. And now we're going to get stuck into my first review spread of the video. This is for Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas, which is of course from Throne of Glass. I'm still working my way through all of the stuff. I am going to the Brisbane Celestial Festival Starfall inspired ball in February, and I'm really excited about it. So I am trying to get through as much Sarah J Maas stuff as I can before then, so I know what the heck people are dressed as. I know the new Crescent City has just come out. I haven't got to that series yet, but I figure if I can get through the rest of Throne of Glass, in the next couple of months I'm doing okay. I do like to read series, but I don't like to binge read series because then I feel like I lose track of what happened in which book. So I like to have a couple of palette cleanser books in between. And wherever possible, I like to get books through the library too to save me some money. So sometimes I have to wait for things to become available. If you watched one of my recent videos where we flipped through my entire 2023 reading journal, you'll have seen my core pile stickers before. I made these to fit the rating system that I'm trying out for this year. I'm really enjoying it so far. It was created by G from The Book Roast and it involves dividing your rating up into seven categories and then dividing it by seven, you get a decimal point number and that correlates to how many stars the book gets. I was worried it wouldn't be very accurate to my gut feeling for how I usually rate books, but it's actually been pretty spot on. So that's good. I've also been doing kind of this halfway lazy art spread for all of the books that I've read so far this year. I feel like just moving into such a big journal, I'm using a B5 for the first time this year. And having all this extra page space has made me think, well, I might as well use it, you know? So I'm just doing a little bit of stationery that sort of matches the theme of the book that I read and trying to make something pretty that feels cohesive with the vibe of the book that the review spread is for. If you see anything you like while I'm setting these up, jump into the description. I will have links to everything that I can possibly link to down there with regard to stationery and also the books that I'm talking about too. So if something sounds really good to you, you can find the book really easily in the description as well. My next review page is for Ruthless Vows, which is the second in the Letters of Enchantment duology by Rebecca Ross. I read Divine Rivals, which is the first one in the duology, not too long ago, November, I think. So I was in the perfect sweet spot when this one came out to kind of jump straight into it, still being really excited about the previous book, but not being right next to it. So I didn't have that kind of bleed between books going on, if that makes sense such a magical story. It's a YA romance slash wartime story. These books just have so much heart. There is compassion and brutality and warring gods and just such a good time. So beautifully, exquisitely written and delivered so beautifully on audiobook as well. This one has dual narrators, even though it is a third person story. Rebecca Ross has done the most incredible job of making this feel like a fantasy story while at the same time making it feel really believable and real. It feels like you could be in World War II, but instead of, you know, global nations fighting, you've got these two 
rival gods who used to be married. It's so amazing, really. Just if you if this isn't on your radar, put it on your radar right now. But it has been really popular, so I feel like it's probably already on your radar. These big serif letter stamps are new to my collection. They're silicon stamps and I'm trying out using some ink pads with my stamps. Usually I, I do it with markers. I do have a few ink pads kicking around so I thought I'd try and make use of them for this one and challenge myself and see how I liked it. So you'll be seeing a lot more of those in this video later on too. And I have this paper that I feel like somewhat matches the book cover a little bit with that sort of evanescing like liquid feeling. There are some typewriters that are really important to the story, so I tried to mimic the typewriter keys from the cover a little bit. I did the same thing for my Divine Rival spread in my previous journal, and I had this typewriter sticker left over from the Sticky Writers Retreat sticker set, so I'm going to use that as well, because of course, it's perfect. Music also plays a pretty big part in the storyline, so I found this leftover bit of washi paper that is sticky on the back that I used in my December setup in my bullet journal, so that's going in too. I love using up the scraps. While I'm setting up the pretty parts of these pages, I'm quite often listening to audiobooks while I do this, so I won't write any of my reviews down just yet. I will stop the audiobook so that I can think about the books better when we get to that, but for now, I'm just gonna carry on setting up the pretty parts and then I'll come back and fill out the written review parts later. That said, there will likely be spoilers in the written reviews of any of the books that I'm reviewing in my journal in this video, so if you don't want spoilers, please don't read. But if you would like to know what I thought of these books, please feel free to pause and zoom in. I flipped back to my January book club pages here and we didn't actually end up having a January literary ladies book because everybody was busy and traveling and stuff. So we've actually just recently talked about our Christmas book. So I thought I would adapt this into a full spread for the page majors instead. That actually was a really good idea in the end because for our page majors catch up chats about the books, we have a series of questions that we will answer about the book and that kind of helps guide us through the discussion. So I left a space to answer those questions for myself in the end. And now I know I need two pages for the page majors. So I'll be bringing that forward with me into my February pages. In order to cover the literary ladies heading on the left side, I'm gonna use my, these are letter stamps that I used at the beginning of this journal as well, quite a lot. So they're making a comeback. They're just the perfect color scheme for the book cover here and for the vibes, cause it is a cozy fantasy story. And I found this key ring while I was moving those things around and thought that could go on the Ruthless Vows page, it'd be perfect. So that worked out really nicely. I wanted to make sure I was fully covering the literary ladies heading over here. So I'm actually gonna put these stickers with my letter stamps on a separate piece of paper. I just have this dot grid rodeo notepad that I use for often work actually. So I'm gonna use it just to put the house and the word which I'm gonna put directly on the page in the journal because I think the heading will be covered by then. Huge shout out to the page mage Hillary who chose this book for our book club purposes. It was actually such a good intersection of cozy vibes and fantasy and like a little bit of romance, but without going too hard. Like it was kind of the perfect introductory book club book. So thank you so much for choosing such a wonderful story for us. The main character of the book is a witch, but his power lies in domestic tasks and making people feel safe and comfortable in their home. I am not a very domestic person, so I was really jealous. I was like, can I have a live-in house witch? That would be really nice. Or if I could just have the magic to do the dishes for me so that I don't have to do them, I'd accept that too. In fact, that might be better. I'm kind of really excited with the way the spread came together because obviously you can see the book cover on the right side of the page there. I had this cauldron sticker left over from a set that I had used elsewhere and the colors were perfect for that to go with the book cover and to go with the lettering at the top and to kind of generally go with the January theme as well. I can't believe how well this all came together and food was a big central part of this story. So I made sure to add some baked goods stickers later on as well.
time to zoom through my actual reviews of the book. I'm speeding this up quite a bit, but if you do want to read them, feel free to pause. Or if you want to see them a little bit more clearly, I have photos over on my Instagram as well that will be posted at some point during the next few weeks. So keep an eye out for those. My Instagram is at erinsmith.art in case you aren't already following me there. I wanted to add the dates I read Queen of Shadows to the review spread and when I did this I realized that I had missed it from the calendar on the right page here as well so we need to fill that in and of course also the star rating. You can't tell because of editing magic, but this was actually a couple of days later, so I had finished Ruthless Vows and I could finish that off on my calendar as well. Now let's review the house witch, including the prompts that I had for my channel members so that we could talk about the book together. I actually stole these from the Oprah Book Club online somewhere, so if you're looking for ways to improve your reviews of books, I recommend just starting with some prompts. These are all stickers from the Sticky Club Pop Advent Calendar and I knew I had some delicious baked goods in here so I had to find them so I could put them down on this spread because Finn talks about a lot of really delicious food in this book including bulgogi beef which is kind of wild for a fantasy book. I enjoyed it. Some real world food in there. I don't have any bulgogi beef stickers though so we're gonna stick to baked goods for this one. Now about the core pile rating system. It has been working really well for me but I missed having kind of half star ratings and maybe even quarter star ratings. So I've adapted the system a little bit. I really just worked out the midpoint between the different star rating levels. And I decided that if my core pile rating exceeds that midpoint, then it will get the extra half a star. I haven't totally decided about the quarter stars yet, but I figure it would just be the same thing. So it would be the halfway point between the midpoint and the flat star rating would get it the quarter star, if that makes sense. The House Witch came in at a nice three and a half stars for me. And if you're following me on Goodreads, I have been rounding my ratings up. So three and a half stars, I will put as four stars on Goodreads. Storygraph thankfully lets you divide your stars up. So it will be the correct rating over there. And there are links to my Storygraph and my Goodreads in the description below as well. So if you wanna follow me on those places, you can do that. We can be friends. We can look at what each other read. Currently, Ruthless Vows is my top rated book of the year so far. It got 8.28 on the core pile system, which gave it four and a half stars. The way I'm using the core pile rating system, it's gonna be really, really hard to get a solid five stars. I'm actually okay with that, but you know, it might happen. There might be a perfect book out there. You never know, we'll have to wait and see. At the time I was setting this up, there were still a few days of January left. So I've left two pages here because I am reading some other stuff. So their reviews will go in that space. And then we're gonna move on to the February pages. There are a few reasons I like to divide my reading journal into months like this. Part of it is just so I can use more stationery because that's really fun. Part of it is that I like statistics and I just enjoy being able to look back at this stuff in the future. And part of it is because I read a fair few books every month, so I feel like this is a logical way to divide them up in my brain. If you read less books than me, that's absolutely totally valid. You could divide things into seasons instead, or you can just not divide your reading journal up and just have it be reviews all the time, which is what my old journal was up until August of last year. So no judgment from me, you do it the way that works for you. Don't let me tell you what to do with your reading journal, unless you want me to tell you what to do with your reading journal, which, <laughs> I'm very excited to announce that I will be teaching a reading journaling workshop at Brisbane's favorite home of stationery Stash World in Fortitude Valley on Tuesday the 5th of March in the evening. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, please jump into the description. There is a link in the description to that event that you can book a ticket. It is a paid event and it is also an in-person event. So unfortunately, if you live overseas, you won't be able to attend, I'm very sorry. It's so exciting, I'm really looking forward to it and I hope to see you there if you can make it. 
Now back to the February reading journal spreads. I mentioned earlier I'm going to Brisbane's version of the Akatar Starfall Ball later this month. I have been looking forward to it since like May last year. I've had my tickets for a really long time and that's kind of all I'm thinking about for February. That's what's on my mind. I had this set of stickers I'd only used one of that are these beautiful ornate letter stickers. Sometimes they're a little bit difficult to work out what letter you're looking at so I had to look them up on the Journal Say website and compare them against the photo to make sure I had the right letters here but I'm using those along with my big silicon stamps again to do all of my heading lettering this time. Actually not all of it but in the places it will fit I'm gonna do that. I'm going with this theme that's somewhat fantasy. It's not really screaming fantasy, but the vibes are fantasy. Luckily, with these silicon stamps, when you turn them over, you can see if you've chosen the right ones. I nearly wrote February, which is not a month. Let's quickly switch that out for the correct letters. I have a PET tape that's quite new from the Washi Tape Shop that as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, this is the magical kind of vibe that I'm looking for without it being too in your face. So I've tried to just match that to things, but it's black, so it was pretty easy to match to things. And of course I wanted to use these letters, so I was like, green and black, obvious choice. I also had a green stamp pad, although it's a little bit dried out. It's been a bit tricky to use, but I'm gonna keep trying anyway. I had some sort of greenish yellow washi paper and some light green and some dark green washi tapes. So I figured I'd just do lots of different shades of green together, gold accents, and of course the black, which is quite visually heavy. So I'm trying to make sure that I balance things really well. Here's that gorgeous black floral PET tape I was talking about. It's the Rose Noir PET tape from the Washi Tape Shop and it is spectacular. As soon as I saw it, I was like, this has to be used immediately. And here we are. It has this lovely soft sort of smoky quality to it and the shine on it is, it's almost like a rose gold. It's very pretty. I've been hoarding this sticker sheet for the opportune moment and I think this is it because it has this sort of rose gold vibe that's gonna tie in beautifully with those roses. This is the Crystal Ball sticker sheet from Sticky and I'm making it my mission to use the entire sticker sheet across this setup. So obviously on the left here is my February cover page, on the right is my reading stats page. I wasn't totally sure going into this how I was planning to approach it besides that I was gonna put the heading at the top with the stickers and the great thing about stamps is that you can stamp over other stamps and have it still be visible. So that worked out really well for the heading here. But below that, what am I gonna do? Well, frames, that's what I'm gonna do. I feel like I'm really enjoying frames a lot lately, but rather than sticking down paper frames this time, which I've done a lot recently, this time I'm gonna stamp them because this is a stamping video. And I'll tell you what, stamping with ink pads is really efficient. It takes a lot less time than stamping with brush pens and stuff, but it's messy. This black ink especially just seemed to get everywhere. I got a lot of smudges on my pages as a result, especially places where that stamp, for instance, the frame I just put there that's going to be for my standout book. I'll put the book cover there for my standout book for February once I know what that's going to be. That frame is a little bit on the plastic of the Reading Stats capital R sticker up the top, and I didn't totally realize that. And so when I close the book, you know, that's not going to dry because it's on plastic. When I close the book, that's going to transfer onto the other page. Just kind of that sort of thing happened a lot. So it's not the end of the world, but maybe keep some wet wipes on hand to clean your fingers so that you aren't transferring stuff onto the pages that way, because I did that a lot too, but also just to clean the stamps and to clean maybe any areas where that kind of thing happens, where you get some stamp on some plastic. Anyway, what we're going for here is a collection of frames. Not, I don't want to say gallery wall because I've done that a lot recently, but that's kind of the vibe, isn't it? So the frames will have a combination of headings and places to write the answer to the thing. So for instance, average rating is going in here and I'm gonna color in the rating above to reflect that. Pages Red has space within its own frame for me to put that. The books completed one I will put in the circle frame that's next to it. And this big circle frame is actually gonna be a pie chart with the 
format of the books that I read, so I thought that would be really fun. I know I'm not usually into drawing my own pie charts, but I think format will be easy enough because it will just be audiobook and ebook, and those are the only two formats I really read in, so it should be an easy one to set up. And this Venetian kind of shape one is going to be for the genres that I read, extra little heading circle frame there for that one. And I'm just going to put arrows next to each one so that it makes sense to myself later in case I forget what I was doing here. And now we just fill in the gaps with some other pretty stuff. This is so funny, I got so carried away testing out my layering that I didn't actually peel off the backing for this piece of washi paper in the corner, so I just went to turn the page and I was like, what's going on here? We need to, we need to fix that. There we go, all done. <laughs> of course we need to add in some of these beautiful smoky black roses as well to make sure that there's consistency throughout the theme. Let's turn the page and we're going to move on to the next couple of spreads. These are for what I call my maybe next and my progress calendar. You've seen what it looks like all filled out already for January, or mostly filled out, not completely just yet. This is the same concept, except I'm adapting it a little bit to give myself some more page space because I am running out of room for books read for the month. So I wanna make sure that I'm accommodating that a little bit more for February, although it is a shorter month, so it's possible I will read less books possibly because there's a few less days. I'm moving the calendar to the left page this time instead of the right, and I'm moving it up the top so that there's a bit more room underneath it. Clearly this does not leave me enough room for a heading with the big letter stamps, but that's okay. I'm just going to use little letter stamps instead. I have those, so I might as well use them. And I'm going to use the space on that left page underneath the calendar to put my maybe next, which is what I call my TBR, just in a less pressure version. This should leave me space to put four books that I might read next underneath the calendar, which should be plenty. And then on the right page, I'm gonna put all of my February reads. So anything that wasn't on the maybe next, including book club books, will go on the right page. I didn't want to cover all the decoration at the top of the page here with big letter stamps, so I'm switching back to the little ones for this time just to do February reads along the top. I didn't want it to go onto two lines, so this was kind of my way of making it work, but I feel like it ties in okay with the left page because we used the same stamps along the top of the calendar, so I think it's good. Just gonna make sure I'm using my Rose Noir roses all around as well to make sure this whole theme ties in together. I have some book covers on the left page that I haven't stuck down yet, but these are all books that are in my maybe next for next month because I have them already through the library or I have them already downloaded on Audible. Now, I got these gorgeous little letter stamps that are like vintage letterpress stamps when I was in London last year and I bought some others so I'd have an almost complete alphabet, but they've been really hard to use. And a few of you guys suggested on my new journal setup for my bullet journal for 2024 to put some foam underneath them when I stamp them and that'll help me get all of the little bits. Look how well it worked. It did crease my paper a little bit, but I'm willing to live with that if it means I can use these stamps in a way that means I don't have to try and draw back the detail that I missed. So thank you so much to everyone who suggested that. That is such an amazing suggestion. You are all geniuses and I truly don't know what I would do without you. I put down my progress little header here and then I decided it covered too much of the pretty. So I'm gonna cut a little bit closer around the lettering here so that I can see some more green. <laughs> I'm still using my HP sprocket to print out my book covers for my journal because I have so much sprocket paper, 
but I must have done something to anger the sprocket gods because I was having a lot of trouble with it this time. Quite often, if you aren't careful, it will reprint the last thing that you sent to print, even if it printed fine the first time around, and I usually remember to check the print queue before I tell it to do anything else, but I forgot and it printed stuff again. Thankfully, I can still use all of those book covers later. I'm kind of just using some as placeholders at the moment, but this is what I really wanted to print. I needed The Serpent and the Wings of Night because I started reading that in January, so it needs to go back in the January pages, I think. I think that's what I'm going to do with it. I've got a compilation book here that I just recently got on Audible that I wanted to have in my Maybe Next. So here's the Maybe Next. We've got All Our Shimmering Skies by Trent Dalton, Aussie author, very good. The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. I've heard a lot of people say this is really good, want to give it a go. Empire of Storms is the next one in Throne of Glass, so of course that's on the list. And The Improbable Meet Cute is a compilation of little romance stories by some really prominent romance authors that I thought sounded like heaps of fun. Basically, I see Ashley Poston's name on something and I'm like, yes, of course, I'm going to read that. Yes. And then on the right page, of course, I've got the two book club books for February. So it's very likely that I will read both of those. In fact, it's almost certain, but not nothing is completely certain, right? I'm going to tuck the rest of those leftover book covers grumpily later in the book. And then I'm going to put Serpent and the Wings of Night back in the January pages. And now we need to add some more gold. Of course, we need to make sure that I'm using this sticker sheet because I want to fully use it up. And that's just about it for this spread for now. This one will change throughout the month of February. So stay tuned for next month's video if you want to see how it goes. We're moving into book club spreads now. This one is going to be for the page majors. It will be a double page spread just like I ended up doing for January's page majors because I found that that was really good. And I was like, one page clearly is not going to be enough for this. So let's make it two. Just making sure to hug the sides of the pages a little bit so that I'm leaving lots of room for my review text later on. Clearly I'm decorating to match the theme of the February pages, but I'll be able to introduce anything that I feel like really fits the theme of the book as well later on. Kind of like what I did with the house witch where I added the food stickers later on, I'll be able to do that again here. I also am not lettering the name of the book yet or anything because I want to get a feel for it and get the vibe and everything before we really jump in. So. That's the plan for the Page Majors page. Most of the time I do the collage thing with the HP sprocket so I have smaller book covers but sometimes I like to feature the book cover really big especially on a book club page like this but check out the sprocket ignoring me again it's going to print two of what you were looking for is in the library. I only wanted one I can't use this second one it's kind of a waste I'll need to work out what to do with all these leftover book covers that it keeps printing me because it did the same thing for the house witch and I just have a spare one kicking around so it's a little bit annoying but whatever it's fine. And last but not least for the themed pages, we've got one more book club page left over to do, and that is for the literary ladies. This is my book club with some friends that we sometimes catch up in real life, sometimes we catch up digitally over Facebook Messenger chat and just talk about a book together. We don't have prompts or anything, it's very informal and casual, so I'm not going to have as much space for this one as I have for the page majors. I'm also not in charge of this book club, so we're kind of leaderless, we just kind of work things out together so I don't need as much space for planning because I am not going to be you know coming up with prompts or anything for this one so one page is fine and the page opposite will probably just end up being the first of the review pages for February I don't have a specific plan in mind for it within the theme and I think that's fine but if I think of something else then I have that space and I can use it if I want to so that's great since this is the end of the themed pages, I want to make sure I'm really using up the last of these stickers from this beautiful crystal ball sticker sheet. So just finding some new spots to fill in gaps and that kind of thing with these to make sure that everybody has a home on the page.
because I film these reading journal videos over the course of several days, it's a bit non-linear the way we're jumping backwards and forwards here, but I have this book cover for a book that I've just recently started. It's The Serpent and the Wings of Night. I started it really close to the end of January, so I wasn't sure if it should go in the January pages here. This is kind of the only spot it'll fit like just kind of halfway onto the next page. So I'm cutting it down the middle because the sprocket paper's pretty thick. I haven't decided yet if I want books that I read partially in one month and partially in the next to sit in both months or just the month where I started it or just the month where I finished it. It's kind of uncomfortable. So for now, I'm just putting this here until I work out what I'm doing. Also, because it was across the center of the page, I had to stamp the star rating stamp in kind of two halves. It was a bit funny, but we're just gonna finish updating some stuff here. I realized I wanted to have my core pile ratings on my maybe next and my overall reads page for each month too, so I could quickly see at a glance what my top book of the month was. So I'm just transferring that information over here and putting it in a circle so it stands out from the dates read information. And once again, through the power of editing magic, we are moving forward through time. February has begun, which means I can fill out my January reading stats. Just like my end of year reading stats in a previous video, I get these through Storygraph. It just kind of collates everything for you if you track your reading as you go, so I find that really helpful. I actually forgot to do the average rating part here, but in case you were curious, my average rating for my January books was 3.56 stars. I read nine books, total of 3,882 pages, which is huge. That's more than I usually do. Once again, just about half half digital and audio, ever so slightly more towards audiobooks. I didn't end up finishing any more books, but I can update the calendar page, the progress bar here, to include the two books that I am continuing to read at the time that you're seeing this. I haven't finished them yet. They are A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross and The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. Still going on those two. I also want to work out what is my top book of the month based on the core pile rating, the one with the highest rating. I've got Inner Jam has a pretty good one, um, but I think, yeah, Ruthless Vows is going to take it out this time as the number one spot with 8.28 for its core pile rating, which means I'm going to put the book cover in this frame up here because that is for the standout book of the month. But I picked this frame without really having worked out what size print needed to go in there. So I've sort of been measuring that, measuring it against the sprocket paper size to see what I need to do. And I ended up custom making a Canva print of it with some space, like a border, almost like a mat around it, so that I could make it fit approximately in this space and it worked out okay so go me I didn't really do the maths very well I just eyeballed it but it worked out fine Now that I've worked out that Ruthless Vows was the highest rated book for me of the month of January, I can flip back to my book bracket, my book battle, whatever you want to call this page, and make sure that there's a little book cover in that corner. I also kind of scrounged to find three other book covers that I could print at the same time because this one I just wanted to be small. So I've got second copies of The Serpent and the Wings of Night and of A River Enchanted to go on their review pages. And also I did the next book in the Throne of Glass series even though I'm not up to it yet because I know that eventually I will read it. So I'll just have that handy until I get there. We also need to update the overall books read list for the year to make sure that the last two books are on there. So adding Ruthless Vows and The House Witch to that page. I quite often forget about this page, but it's okay because Storygraph and Goodreads keep track of this stuff for me anyway, so I can just backdate that if I need to. And we've got to bring the goal page up to date as well. We're up to nine books, so just coloring in the last two here for January with the brown pen. If I leave that, I'll probably forget which brown pen, but we're moving into a green layout for February, so I'm going to use my green 192 Tombow to fill it in for February. No books yet, because I haven't finished any yet for February. We're not that far in yet. Remember I left these two pages free just before we move into the February layouts? Those are going to be the review pages for A River Enchanted and The Serpent and the Wings of Night once I have finished them, so I'm going to put those there. And the last thing I want to do is add page numbers to all of the pages. I'm keeping an index in the front of this journal, so having page numbers helps, but obviously my journal didn't come with page numbers printed in there, so I'm just adding them myself as I go. And it sounds labor intensive, but if I just do it once a month, it's really not, so it's totally fine. My very, very last task for this journal, I just thought there was a bit too much empty space at the bottom of this page, so I'm adding a bit more washi tape to finish it off. And here is the flip through of my entire January up until set up February reading journal for 2024. Thank you for planning with me, reading with me, updating my trackers with me. And if you made it all the way to the end of this video, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite read was in January. Also, don't forget to check out Skillshare and make use of the 
free trial for the first 500 people to use my link so you can master that new hobby or scale things up into a side hustle. I'm off to go start practicing makeup looks for that Brisbane Celestial Festival Star Fall Ball, so sounds like the perfect opportunity to listen to some more audiobook to me. If you'd like to keep watching though, I recently posted a full flip through of my entire 2023 reading journal from start to finish, literally everything that I read last year and also a little bit of what I read the previous year too, so if you'd like to see that there is a link on the screen right now as well as a link to another video that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. I'll see you again soon. Bye.